What's up guys? Today I'm finally going to be ranking the Paranormal Activity films. And before we get into it, I just want to give a heads up that this list will be pretty controversial. And if you disagree with any of it, which you will, um, please let me know why and give me your rankings in the comments. And another thing is that uh, I love all of these movies, with one exception. Um, I just love some of these movies more than I love others. And speaking of that one exception, let's get right into number seven. At last place, we have Next of Kin. And since I could go on all day about what I dislike about the movie, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. Let me start off by mentioning the few things I like about it, beginning with the scene where Margot's lowered down into the hole. I think it's basically the only scene in the movie that's genuinely creepy and effective. Oh, and also the shot where Osmodius is crawling up the hole actually had me on the edge of my seat. Dale's death was also pretty cool. It was just sad to see him go because he was pretty funny and basically the only character I actually cared about. And the second best scene of the movie is definitely when they're running through the village witnessing all the chaos. Which brings us to the last good thing I have to say about the film. It's a scene I genuinely enjoy where the possessed Samuel just so nonchalantly makes the cops take themselves out and then just casually rides off with the police cruiser as he's listening to music. I just wish the rest of the movie was this good. But it isn't. So let's get into it. My biggest problem with the movie is that it's barely a paranormal activity film. Like if you get rid of that title, you would literally have no idea that it's even supposed to be a part of that series. Like it doesn't connect to the previous films at all. It doesn't continue the story, it doesn't have any returning characters, and it doesn't even have Toby in it. And don't you dare try to tell me that Osmodius is Toby because that doesn't make any sense and that doesn't line up with the timeline at all. Fight me. And even if you try to look at it as its own movie, it's just a generic found footage horror film with the laziest jump scares. Oh shit! Ah, it's a scarecrow, holy shit. Another big problem I have with the film is that it's not even 100% found footage. And I've never seen a found footage horror film where it just cuts to random shots that aren't even found footage. And it's especially jarring during the big climactic scene where Margot kills Osmodius, considering it's entirely shot as if it was a normal movie. And on top of that, there's a bunch of editing errors throughout the film. Like in this scene, the cameraman teleports all over the room. And there's even a shot where you can see the actual film crew in the background. And one last thing before we move on to number 6. You know how in every paranormal movie, there's always a new gimmick? Like in 3, there was the fan, 4 was the connect, and Ghost Dimension was the ghost camera? Well, I feel like next of Kin's gimmick was the whole slow-mo thing, but there's literally only three times it's used, and only once do they actually do anything with it. So yeah, that's about all I have to say about Next of Kin. It's not the worst thing, it's just not a very good paranormal activity film, and at its best, it's just a generic found footage horror film, and not to mention that it kind of ruined the possibility of a future sequel. And at number 6, we have the first Paranormal Activity. And before you say anything, yes I know it's blasphemous, putting the original this low, but like I said, from this point forward I don't dislike any of the films. Like I can't deny just how iconic the first film is. Like it's been parodied all over the place, and it basically kickstarted the found footage horror genre, along with the Blair Witch Project. I also can't deny how effective the scares are, like even before I saw the movie, I only saw a few clips as a kid and they were enough to traumatize me, specifically the shot of Katie staring at Mika for hours, and because of this scene, I still don't let my feet hang over the bed. But regardless, this movie is just kind of boring to be honest, like, it's just not one that I ever want to rewatch. And to tell you the truth, I never would have continued the rest of the series if it wasn't just free on Netflix. But boy am I glad it was, because this franchise wouldn't be my favorite horror series otherwise, not to mention that this YouTube channel wouldn't even exist. So to sum it up, 
This movie is probably the most effective with its scares, but regardless of how iconic it is, it's still kind of just boring to me. In fifth place, we have Paranormal Activity 2. Now this one is a little complicated, because when I first watched it, I also thought it was pretty boring, but since then I've come around to it, and now it's one that I actually rewatch from time to time, but still, if I'm being honest, not that much happens until the finale. Like on night one, the only thing that happens is that the light to the pool turns off, and there's even a night where I straight up thought nothing happened. Only years later, while I was editing a video, where I noticed that the closet door was being messed with. But despite all that, I still enjoy it. Mostly because there's just something about watching families live their lives that I enjoy. Which is probably a big reason why I like the series so much. Also, let's not forget that this movie has some really standout moments as well. Such as the scene with the cabinets. Like, that's probably the best jump scare of the series. And the scene where Christy is dragged down the stairs and into the basement, that's definitely my favorite scene of the film. Second favorite is when Katie goes full on Terminator at the end. And one last thing, this wouldn't be a deceased flesh video if I didn't talk about the real MVP of the film, the mother effin' pool cleaner! Like there's a reason why it became such a meme on my channel, and it all started with this film. Well actually it started with Scary Movie 5, but it's just so funny how heavily the pool cleaner is featured in this film. So overall, the film's kind of slow, but it has some really standout moments in the third act that I think makes up for it. And in fourth place, we have Paranormal Activity 4. Alright, so this is another complicated one, because I actually used to have this at third place, but eventually people's opinions kind of started to rub off on me, and over time, I started to notice its flaws. Like my biggest problem with the film is that it doesn't have any impact on the overall story. Like if you removed it from the series, nothing would change. Cause how did Hunter end up getting adopted in the first place? Did Katie lose him somehow? Or was it a part of the Coven's plan? And if so, why? It just bothers me that we'll never get an answer to that. But that's really my only problem with the movie, to be honest. It's actually my second most rewatched film in the series. I just love the gimmick of the connect, like the scene when you realize there's a third person running with the kids, also the scene where Toby is slowly walking up behind Hunter, and although we got some pretty neat stuff with the connect, I kind of wish they did more with it. I also love the scene where Alex escapes the garage. That part actually made me cheer a little, it's probably my favorite scene. But to be truthful, I don't think that this movie has many standout moments. Besides the garage scene, I feel like Alex levitating is the most memorable part of the film. Well that and Demon Katie at the end, even though I think the finale is a little underwhelming, and that shot of the entire coven in the backyard is kinda silly. But nevertheless, I'm still fond of this movie overall. I like the plot twist with Hunter, I really like the dynamic between Alex and Ben, and I think the family is pretty believable, which helps cause like I said before, I like watching families just live their lives. So in conclusion, I know this film has its flaws, like they could have done a lot more with it, but I still haven't gotten tired of rewatching it, and I won't forget just how much I enjoyed it the first time I watched it. In third place, we have Paranormal Activity 3. So now is where it really gets good, because this is where the series started for me. It's the movie that got me hooked on the series. And before I start kissing its butt, I only have one small nitpick to get out of the way first. And that is that it sorta of retcons what Katie and Christy say about their childhood. But who cares? This movie is freaking great! It's the one that adds all the lore to the series, introducing the coven, adding more backstory, giving Toby a name and making the franchise a bit more than just a straightforward haunted house series, which I will forever appreciate, since another big reason why I love this series is because I love the story and lore behind it. And there's just so much to love about this film. To start off, I love the characters. I love the family dynamic. 
I love the relationship between Julie and Dennis. I love how good of a dad Dennis is to Katie and Christy, even though he's not even their real dad. I just love Dennis in general. Definitely one of my favorite characters of the series. Like he did everything he could to try and save the girls at the end, even giving his life for them. Even though again, they're not even his real kids. He went out like an absolute G, being rewarded the best death of the series. No one can deny that Dennis is an absolute Chad. Also, Dennis's assistant Randy is a pretty funny character, and he's also the only character smart enough to actually leave when scary stuff starts happening. But moving on from the characters, this movie has so many standout moments. Beginning with easily one of the best moments of the entire franchise, the sheet scene. I just love the slow buildup as the camera keeps panning back and forth, and then the sheet falling to the floor, revealing that there was no one underneath it. Ugh, so good. I just love when a scene can scare you without a lame jump scare. Oh shit! And the whole gimmick of the fan camera is just pure genius, and a highlight of the film for sure. There's just so many good moments in this film, like when the dust falls on Toby during the earthquake, the Bloody Mary scene where Toby throws everything around, the part where Toby grabs Katie by the hair, the part where Toby pulls Katie into the cubby hole, the clip of the entire kitchen falling from the ceiling, not to mention the entire finale, from the discovery that the grandma was in on it the whole time, to Dennis walking around Lois's creepy old house, the reveal of the witches in the garage, the part where Julia is levitating and thrown down the stairs, and finally, Dennis's brutal death to close off one of the best finales of the franchise. So to recap, Henry and Rel cooked with this movie, and it is simply perfection. It started my love for the series, and I will forever appreciate it. In second place, we have the Ghost Dimension. And so now we come to the most controversial placement of this ranking. And you can light your torches, get out your pitchforks, but I've honestly never understood the hate for this film. So I want to know why you dislike it in the comments. And don't just say, cause it's bad. I want to know why you feel that way. Because I actually love this film and don't really have any problems with it. It's my most rewatched film in the series, like even reaching double digits at this point, and I still haven't gotten sick of it. But some common complaints I hear is that all the CG is jarring since the previous films didn't use as much. Also that they showed Toby since what made him so scary in the first place was that you couldn't see him. Which I understand, but it doesn't bother me. I actually think that it works for the last film in the series. It was meant to be a big climax, and I love finally being able to see Toby. I love everything they did with him in this film. It's legit my favorite part of it. I love the design of him, and that he's a black smoke creature, and the way it looks when he moves around the house. Also, the CG in this film is pretty darn good. Like, it was done by freaking ILM. The VFX house that makes the effects for Star Wars and for some of the biggest movies in the industry. On top of the CG, I just really like the look of this film in general. I like the lighting, the Christmas setting, the house. It all makes for a creepy atmosphere. I love the sound design too. Like when Toby first forms and when Ryan walks into him and it sounds like he's underwater. Also the sound of the portal opening. Like you know you must have done something right when I even praise the sound design. Another big reason why I love this movie is that they give us more time travel. Like the scenes where they watch Christy see into the future are definitely highlights of the film. And even better is when Emily travels back to 1992 and ends up in the house from the third film. I also just love that this movie connects to the third film so heavily and that it adds more lore to the story showing us Katie and Christy living with the coven, and revealing that Toby's plan was to get a human body this whole time. Okay, so I know this film has a lot of jump scares, but I think the scene where Skylar's in the backyard and all the crickets stop chirping is definitely the most unnerving scene of the film. And one of my absolute favorite scenes in this film is when we see the ghost dimension itself. It's another design I love the look of, like there's a reason why it was on all the marketing. 
I even have the poster above my bed, and it's also my phone's wallpaper. The whole finale is great too, I really like the epic scale of it. Like when we see Toby in his demon form, as he's flailing around in the vortex, and then the shot of him growing bigger with the sheet over him. Then the best part, Emily goes through the time portal and ends up in the house from the third film. And if that wasn't enough, we see Toby in his human form. And I know some people don't like how little we see of him, but I like that all we see is his legs. So yeah, I don't know if you could tell, but I think this finale was a great conclusion to the film, and it's my second favorite finale of the series. So if anyone's still watching at this point, this is the part where I sum up how I feel about the film, because I know many people will heavily disagree with my opinions on this one, but to me, I think it's one heck of a spectacle and a satisfying way to close off the series. And in first place, we have the Marked Ones. Like, what else would it be? It simply can't be topped. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the formula of this series, but I just love that they tried something different with this one. I love that instead of focusing on another rich suburban family, we focus on friends that live in a poor Hispanic community. Just everything about this film is flawless. The characters are great, the comedy is great, the action is great, the horror is great, and I think it's the scariest film of the series. With two of the scariest scenes in the franchise, starting with the scene where Jesse checks the bathroom stalls, but after seeing that no one is there, they begin to leave, so something starts to violently bang on one of the doors, and the scene where Toby sprints at Jesse is hands down the scariest scene of the entire franchise. I also know that I said that I hate jump scares, but this film's jump scares are peak. Specifically when Oscar grabs Penelope by the head, and my favorite jump scare ever is when Oscar jumps off the church and just obliterates that car. But the scares aren't the only thing this movie does well. This film also has some of my favorite characters, like the friendship of the three main leads is so believable, and the friendship between Jesse and Hector just works so well. Not to mention the real star of the film, Jesse's grandma Irma. She is freaking hilarious and must be protected at all costs. The characters are also responsible for some of the funniest moments, and there are too many to mention, but the scene where Hector falls off the chair is definitely the funniest moment of the series. So one of the many highlights of this film is the Simon game. It's a creative substitute for a Ouija board, and I love everything they do with it. Like when I was making my Paranormal Activity fan film, the first thing I did was buy one of those things. Another thing I love about this movie is how much it connects to the previous films. Like I was so thrilled to see Grandma Lois's house again, and especially when Allie made a cameo. Like this film was meant to be a spin-off, and yet it has so many connections to the rest of the series. You hear that next of kin? You should probably be taking notes right now. I also love the scene where Jesse is getting beaten up by thugs, and Toby yeets them through the air. And even better is the scene right after that, which happens to be my second favorite scene of the whole series. The scene where Jesse is testing out his powers. I love, love, love this scene. It's just so much fun. Jesse leaning back and getting caught in midair is easily the best part, and it all gives me major Chronicle vibes. And before ending this ranking, we have to talk about the best finale of the series. And I'll try to stay as calm as possible while talking about it. Because let me tell you, Nothing has ever gotten me this hype while watching a horror film. Like when those gangsters opened that trunk and pulled out guns, I lost it knowing what was coming next. And sure enough, when Arturo blasts that old lady with the shotgun, I cheered almost as loud as I did when Andrew Garfield showed up in No Way Home. This one scene is easily my favorite scene of the entire franchise. And that's not even all this finale has to offer. I love when they reveal that they're at Grandma Lois's house, and just all the references they make to the third film. And if all of that wasn't enough, Hector travels back in time to the night of Mika's death. When I realized the house he was in, I flipped out. Like wow, what a way to end a movie. It constantly kept one-upping itself, and I honestly think that it might be my favorite finale to any movie ever.
And so now, we finally come to the end of this ranking, and I think I made my thoughts pretty darn clear on this one. It's not only my favorite film of the series, but it's also my favorite horror film in general, and my 10th favorite movie of all time. It is just such a fun film to watch, and I f***ing adore it. So that's my ranking of the Paranormal Activity series, and I hope you made it this far. Because, like I said, I know this list is going to be controversial, but I just love this series. It's my favorite horror franchise, and I wouldn't even have a YouTube channel without it. And it even got me into filmmaking, so I will forever appreciate it for that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. But like I said, that's pretty much it. Go check that out. Hmm. Must have been the wind. Is that you? Huh. Hmm. This wind do be crazy. Huh. The wind really do be crazy.